introduce myself to all of you. For some, who has been on a call with me? Just raise your hand. Okay. So a lot of you know a little bit about me. Um, but for those that do not know me, let me give you some insight. So I have been involved in this industry for well over 20 years. I was a, in my 20s. Have, have, any, have any of you ever heard Christmas Around the World? Is it? That's how old I am. <laughs> it was a party day company, and I was newly married, and my one of my best friend's mother-in-law was a manager for Christmas Around the World, and signed me up to be a consultant for that company. And it was all like uh, low-end crap, <laughs> you know, decorations and tchotchke stuff. And I got this big kit looked at it and I was like, oh gosh, this is not for me. I can't do this. I can't sell. I don't want anything. I didn't do a thing with it. I was like, we turned the kit after. Uh, I think she actually came and said I want the kit back. <laughs> uh, that was my first experience with direct sales, so it didn't go very well. Uh, then as I you know, was married and I had little kids and my husband, we moved for his career and I I had two kids when we moved for him, and I remember the day we were moving into my house, and my mom says to me, you know what they say, Leanne, new house, new baby. I said, no. No, I have a boy and a girl. I'm, I'm done. Surprise! So I was like, okay, we have three kids. I'm going to stay home. How am I going to make this work? So I was watching my friend's kids. Someone had, a friend of mine was selling Avon and said, you should sell Avon. I'm like, okay, I'll sell Avon. So I was doing, I was doing that. And I love to, I love home decorating and, and I love doing like dry floor arranging and all that. So I was doing it for myself and people started buying my stuff. So I started doing that. So I had all these little businesses just trying to make enough money to stay at home with my three kids. And I hosted a party, one of those, you know, home parties. And I had, a, it was a huge success, it was a lot of fun, and the gal that had, had, the consultant had come to do it and said, do you want to do this? And I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I've got three little kids, I'm really busy. She's like, but it's only a hundred bucks to get started. I was like, well, all right, for a hundred bucks, I get all the stuff, I'll give it a try. And I can remember telling her in that moment, all right, I'll, I'll sell. I'll try this for a month and I'll sell. I'm not doing that recruiting stuff. I'm not, I don't want any part of that. I just, just let me sell. Um, I wanted to buy a new car at the time. I wanted to buy a minivan, if that dates me, right? I a minivan. <laughs> and uh, a Woody. I had a beautiful <laughs> Dodge Caravan. Yeah. And uh, my husband said to me at the time, he's like, honey, you can buy any car you want as long as you can make the car payment. So I have, I still to this day have, this was 20 years ago, I still have the post-it note that's stuck on my refrigerator that says $384. That was my goal. That's what I wanted to make every month so I could make my car payment. So after my first month, I made my car mortgage payment and it was like, oh, I want to do that recruiting thing. <laughs> because I was like, well, if this works for me, it can work for everyone. Because if I can do it, anyone can do this. And that's where it started for for me. Within six months, I was a manager, probably about what a diamond would be here. Uh, we had, in the company I was with, we had to wait. They you weren't allowed to promote quickly. We also had a recruiting freeze. When I first started, they were so, we were so, we broke so fast, they put a hold on it. We could not recruit people until they could catch up. So you think 21 Day Fix was hard to overcome? No. Try not being able to sponsor a coach. No. Okay? So anyway, um, I just never looked back. So I built a team without social media, face-to-face. Um, -face. I had a million-dollar team and grew my business to be one of the top recruiters in our company. We speak uh, nationally. I spoke at a national conference several times. I spoke regionally. Um, and realized that this is my passion, this is where I was meant to be. In the height of all of that, I had another child, I had our fourth. So I'm the mom of four. I have a 26-year-old, 24-year-old, 21-year-old, and a 16-year-old. 
They are my biggest accomplishment. I've had many successes with my business, but my most important and most meaningful success are my kids. And I hope that I can bring you all of a little bit of that with me today as well. Because you can have it, you can have it and do it really well if you have the right mindset and you plan to do it well. One of the best things I saw with my business was how my kids looked at me as a business person. I can remember, because I heard every trip that our company had, and one of, and I was like what an elite coach would be. You know, I got all the extra perks. And one of them was, I think my son, my oldest was maybe 10, and I had earned the, a family trip to Disney. And the, one of the extra perks was I got to take them all to uh, Cirque du Soleil. And we had seats right in the center in the middle. So when the, when the people were coming out and swinging over, they were right over us. And I remember, I get choked up thinking about it. I remember my son turning to me and looking at me and saying, thank you, Mom, this is awesome. It was like, oh, I still I still get chills. He's 26 <laughs> with his own son. I'm a, I'm a grandma. And so it's in those moments where we realize how empowering we are, not only to the other people we, we touch and bring into the business, but to our family who is watching us. How many of you have kids? Yeah, yeah. I know there are some of you who don't have kids, but I want you to understand that you are the model of success for the little people in your life that are watching you. So do it well, and do it knowing that they are watching you. It's a really important part to take. And I'm still married. For 27 years, we've been married. Because that's the other thing that I've seen in this industry is once you get really successful and you're growing, you get focused on your business, I've seen a lot of divorce. I've seen women rise to the top and then not have someone to share it with because they left their spouse in the dust somewhere. So I hope that I can bring some of that to you as well to keep you grounded and focused on what's really important in your life. Because it's great to be at the top of the mountain, but it sucks if you're alone. Good, so we're on the same page there. So what I bring to all of you is I have done it all. I have been in the trenches. I know what it's like to rely on a commission check. I know what it's like to have someone that you were hoping was gonna go for something and hit something and they don't, and it affects you. I completely get it. I know what it's like to have people say, yes, I'm gonna sign up, and then no, they don't. So I've seen it all, I've done it all, and I've helped people overcome that. So I'm glad to be here so that I can hopefully help you guys move past whatever the barriers are that are holding you back. And I've had those too. So I got it all together. You know, she's really confident. Yeah, I didn't always start that way. You're looking at a girl who was abandoned as a baby, who went through foster care, who had a great life, was adopted, had a great life, but for my entire life, I dealt with the fact that I was rejected. So if you can get over that rejection, you can handle anything. If I can be here, you can all be here. I am nothing special. I was raised by two blue collar, hard working people who love me to death, with a father who told me, whispered in my ear all the time, you can do whatever you want. You are awesome. You are gonna be great. That is the difference. I post on Facebook all the time. I have a, a like page. I try to put only positive stuff out on Facebook. And I had a woman that I was speaking to just last week who's not in the business at all. And she said to me, she's like, I follow you on Facebook. And she said, my whole life, my family, all I ever heard was no. No, you can't do that. No, we'll never be able to do that. No, 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 no. She goes, I read your post and all I ever, all I ever see is yes. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you can do it. Um, and I'm going to tell you, yes, you can do it. Whatever it is that you want out of this business, you can have it. If you get focused on it and you learn the skills to get you there. So today, we're going to start off with learning one of the most important skills to this industry, and it's relationships. We're going to move into some time management skills as well. That is critical, knowing where to focus your time. 
Because I remember I said, the little people that are watching you, the, the stuff <laughs> in your life, or the stuff you want to be in your life, you have to learn what's important and where to focus your time so that you can be successful in all the areas of your life, all the roles that you play. So we're going to spend some time on that as well. And then I'm, I'll be wrapping it up with some of the leadership skills that I think are the most important. Uh, and I, we have Jason, who's also going to talk to us a little bit and give you the, the, the numbers. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. But that's what you're, you're going to get from me. Uh, and those who have heard me on a call, you know I keep it real. Don't mean to offend anyone. If I do, I'm really sorry. I am a nice person. But I won't do you any favors if I'm not honest with you. Uh, I'm not going to give you fluff. Because that I didn't want it when I was in the field. If I want to tell me what to do, tell me what to do. And I'll do it. That's how I was. Because I wanted it. I wanted the big picture for myself and for my family. So I will call you out on your stuff. So, um, but in a loving way, because I care about you, right? You guys know I've done it with both of them too, right? Because I just want what's best for all of you. I really do. Too. I really do. That's what really lights my fire. People ask me all the time, "Well, why'd you leave the field?" Um, there are a multitude of reasons, um, but it wasn't until recently that I really feel like God revealed to me why I'm doing this. Because when I had my team. I can impact a certain amount of people. Now I can impact thousands upon thousands of people doing what I do, helping all of you grow your businesses and, and be great leaders. So that's why I'm here today. So we are going to get started with relationships. How many of you asked the name of your server last night? I did. I made sure I knew his name. I made sure I, I noticed the names of the guys in the serving us. Relationships are extremely important. I just checked out and the, I called the front desk and she said, hi, this is Beverly. I said, hey, Beverly, my name's Leanne. How are you this morning? That makes a difference in the lives of people. Start doing it now. When someone is serving you in some way, shape, or form, find out their name. Connect with them. Relationships what are what build your business. It's what builds your life. I will never see Beverly. I will never, never talk to her ever again, likely. But how do you think she felt going into her day? People love to hear their name. They love to be called by name. Last night, when, when Ricky was at our table serving us, I asked him, so what's your name? And he told me so that I could say to him, thank you so much, Ricky. I really appreciate it, as I gave him my drink ticket. <laughs> so it's really important to make that connection. So we are going to start with the color code and learning about relationships. Now you all, did everyone take the assessment? I know some of you here, I don't think everyone here took it. Don't worry, you can take it anytime you want. That link um, is live until all of the uses are, are gone. And if they are, you can always go to the uh, color code link that is for, says Beachbody Coach, is the coupon codes. Uh, we have agreement with the color code. I'm certified in this program, and they have given all Beachbody coaches a discount. So it's half off the, the normal price for the assessment. So you can use this code and Give it to your friends, your family, um, and they can get this, this, the same discount on the, the assessment. So I highly recommend that you do that. I think you probably want to after you hear a little bit about the color code. So why color code your life? Because all life is about relationships, like I just said. Relationships with yourself and relationship with others. We're going to talk a lot about relationship with yourself. So why yourself? You know, I think it was Socrates that said no thyself. It is like the most powerful thing that, that I've ever done for myself as far as self-development is understand why I am the way I am and why I do the things that I do. Um, how happy are you? you know, are you truly happy? Have you ever really thought about it? And what will make you happy? 
Where does your life work? Like, where are the things in your life that are working for you? What would you like to change? And then with others, how are you doing at work? How are you doing here with your beach body business, with your team? What about your friends? How are your relationships with your friends? How's your love life with your significant other? And how's your family situation? That's why relationships are really important. Here are some facts for you. In a normal economy, 85% of the people fired lose their jobs because of relationship problems. Think about this in the frame of reference of your beach body team. How many people quit or are unhappy because of their relationships with the other people in their team or with you as their leader? The average manager spends 19 to 29% of their time resolving personality conflicts. They may not be major, it's those little nitpicky things that you're dealing with, with the people that you work with. With our relationships, here's why, why understanding relationships are important, because of the divorce statistics that we see. So, we're going to learn today about core motives and natural talents. The assessment you took showed whether you were red, blue, white, or yellow, and to the percentage that you were. And the red core motive is power, blue is intimacy, white is peace, yellow is fun, and the natural talents associated with each of those are leadership and vision, quality and service, clarity and tolerance, enthusiasm, and so that's what we're going to talk about um, this morning. But first I want to talk about something that's really important. Does anyone know what a paradigm shift is? No, no one knows what a paradigm shift is. Go ahead. What's a paradigm shift? <laughs> when you change the way you think about something to... Right, yeah. You know, the world was flat? Well, no, it's not. Wow. Look at the paradigm shift that happened when we discovered that the world was not flat, that it was, was round. So we're going to talk about the paradigm shift in what we think about with personalities and behaviors. So I'm sure you've all been to seminars. You've done Myers-Briggs. There's the, um, Jason's not here yet, is he? This is what he wanted me to talk about. So to him. Because um, he wanted to understand it. Because you guys have done the jams and you've done Personality Plus and all of that, that measures behavior. And we look at those and we look at how we can modify behavior. But that is just 10% of who we are. Because things uh, uh, modify the behavior, right? The real way to, to understand yourself and and understand other people is to understand motive. So if you were to look, to look at a person, you only see 10%, and that's in the behavior. And motive is 90% of what drives a person. Your behavior changes based on the filters of your life, okay? If you've gone through a divorce, you've been in an abusive relationship, uh, you were abandoned as a child, I mean, all those things impact your behavior. It's when you can align with your core motive that you become truly happy because then you're living the life that you were meant to live. We are all born with a core motive. It is innate, does not change. The science shows us that how you were born is you come out with that motive and it's one of the four that we, we're gonna talk about. Um, but you might have a domineering parent who wanted you to do things a certain way, or wanted you to behave a certain way based on their core motive, but doesn't make your kids that same core motive. I would love to believe that all four of my kids came out just like me, but none of them did. Mm -hmm. And for most of their lives, I tried to make them be me, and wondered why it was so challenging for me to <laughs> get through it. Um, but when we've done the color code with our entire family, I realized, oh, my husband's a red and he's an engineer. My son is an engineer. 
my oldest, and I thought, you know what, he's a red. Before we even he did the assessment, oh, he's a red. He's just like his father. Uh, I'm sure of it. He's a white. He's a white. And when I looked at all of that, I was like, he is a white. It's no wonder that, you know, I could look at him and I could yell at him. I'm a yeller. I'm a yeller. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, why did you hate your sister? And he would just look at me. <laughs>
I want you to think of people in your life as we go that you think might fit here, and you can put them in business relationships, personal relationships. But I want you to think of people as we go through the descriptors. So the strengths were read. They're decisive, they're competent, they're assertive, they're responsible, they're proactive. Here's an example. Do you all see that? Oh, we can't hear it. Okay. Well, that really broke the rail. Many of you see this movie? Yes. Wants and wants are a little bit different. They want a high in 
securities tightly. They want to be productive. They want to be in a leadership position. They want to experience challenging adventure. The keys to relating to a red, what you want to do is present facts logically. Uh, when you go to them with an issue, they want facts and figures. Any of you reds sitting here thinking, yeah, just give me the facts. Um, my husband's a red, and I'm a blue. Um, and uh, it's very hard for me to go with facts and figures, because I want to go with the emotion. I'm sad, I'm angry. He wants to know why. Can you tell me the why? Let's fix it. Um, they want you to be direct, brief, and specific. Jeff Hill's a red, and I work with Jeff Hill. So I need to always be sure, even in an email, however I'm communicating with him, that I'm giving him things very brief and specific to what I need and how I want him to respond. Articulate your feelings clearly. Support your correct decisions. What you don't want to do with the red is argue from an emotional perspective. They don't, they don't get it. Get, get to the fact. Don't be slow or indecisive. You want it now. Some of you are laughing like, yeah. <laughs> um, don't wait for them to ask your opinion. They generally don't care. <laughs> Take their arguments personally. Because it's not personal. They don't care about your opinion necessarily, but it's not personal to you. Again, 100% responsibility falls on who? Reds under stress delegate, demand, they cause stress in others, they're task dominant, more productive and successful under stress, and they can be overly aggressive under stress. I recognize the red. Right. Awesome. How long do 
Yeah. Uh, but I eat 20, which gives me five minutes for social time, five minutes to get refocused. <laughs>
sit down and get the tea. You would have preferred to be inside reading a book, but we were pushing you to get outside and play. And so when you think about, that's why it asks you to go back to where, how you felt as a child. What drove you as a child to your earliest recollection? Because you might recall things differently than you actually, how you actually live them. A lot of people I know actually do ask their parents, what, how was I when you grew Because that assessment is difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But it usually comes out pretty true to, to where you are. Um, the thing that's interesting is people who have a, a pie that shows a lot are usually blues or whites because they're the most indecisive. So when they're taking the assessment, they're like, is I good? Is I bad? Oh, did I feel bad? Why was that? What do I put? You know, because that's typical of a blue and a, a white personality. But the reds, no, and here's where I was, right? Um, so, but anyway, so it was always very, it was very interesting and eye-opening to me to look at my older two kids. And, and my older two kids, too, again, when you start, when you get messed up by thinking of behavior and not um, far motive, my older two kids, one went to Duke as an engineer and one was pre-med at Harvard. They were definitely, I, would, I thought they were reds, and neither of them were reds. They had, one was a highly competitive athlete, just not what I expected them, what was motivating them was peace, not power. So don't get it confused. Strengths, they're kind, they're even-tempered, they're objective, they're diplomatic, they're inventive. Here's an example. Can you honestly and truly go to the problem between the horses? Hi. Be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did ask her if she wanted to go. Um, a bunch of us from the team are going to go to Pentagon and we go to prom and we go to BTS Parents Academy. We're, we're, we're getting a stretch limit on. Your mom must be pretty stoked that you're not taking me. Yeah, why are you mad? <laughs> I mean, despite the fact that well, I'm in a fat suit that I can't take off, and despite the fact that pretty much everyone's making fun of me from my back, and despite the fact that your little girlfriend gave you the stink eye in our class yesterday. Katrina's not my girlfriend, right? I doubt that she gave you the stink eye. That's just the way her face looks. You know? <laughs> Whatever. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> I love these preps are so fun. Needs and wants of a wife. They need to feel good inside. They need to be given space. They need to be respected. They need to be accepted. What they want is to withhold insecurities, to please self and others. They want to be independent and they want to feel content. Any of you whites relate to that, some of those feelings? How to relate to a white? You want to accept them as individuals. Create an informal, relaxed setting. They don't like high pressure at all. Combine firmness and kindness. You want to show patience with uh, a white. What you don't want to do is be cruel and insensitive. They go right inside themselves. You don't want to force immediate verbal expression. Like my son, he's not going to tell her yes or no right away. She wants, she's a red, she wants to know. Are we doing it? Yes? No? Come on. And he's, that's not his style. So who's responsible there? She is. If she wants from him what she needs to get, she needs to approach him to Overwhelm them with too much, force confrontation. That will never work. Whites under stress. They close down. They ignore. They fantasize. They stuff stress in. They blame others and then self. I hear yeses. I recognize a white. <laughs> I can see your lips moving, but all I hear is blah, blah, blah. So that's my son, I'm yelling at him. <laughs> White personality. Yoda. There's some awkward stickers for whites. Wait. <laughs> well, what do you think she 
us. Limitations. Uncommitted, disorganized, afraid to face facts, unfocused, impulsive. It's hard, it's challenging to raise a yellow when you're a blue or a red, I think. Um, until I have, my youngest daughter in particular is 16 years old. She's a probably mostly yellow. And um, her room is an absolute disaster. <laughs> disaster. And what I have learned with her is if I'm in there with her in her room, I can say, I can say to her to her blue in the face, pick up your room. Pick up your room, Julia, get your room picked up. And I can come back 15 minutes later and she's got the headphones on and she's dancing and singing, like there's stuff all over the place. But if I'm in there and I say, okay, put the socks in the drawer, pick up the underwear, and I'm really specific with her, she can do it. She wants to do it, she wants to please me, but she's too busy being unfocused. <laughs> She's having fun. So if I can make things fun for her, then I'm uh, then I win. Because right? she wants to please. So it's really um, understanding again who's responsible. I can't change what drives her, right? Can't change what her core motive is, but I can adjust how I react to her, respond to her based on what her limitations are. So all of you who have yellows on your team have to understand that. All of you yellows have to understand the reds who are wanting you to get things done. So you have to take the responsibility for it. Here are some limitations. As you put it, I will tell you two things. The living environment. Oh, I'm going have it that really. <laughs> and I will be coming by on Monday and Friday evenings to inspect it. I'll put on a chicken. <laughs> Of course, there's always the job issue. This is the nearest employment office. I've taken the liberty of making an appointment for you. Oh, by the way, do you have any special skills? Yes, I do. I do voices. <laughs> what do you mean? Do you do voices? <laughs> yes, I do voices. Yes! I didn't have to study for the SAT, I said they're going to have their own. 
how to recognize a yellow. <laughs> based on what I've done in my life, what I've accomplished, um, and how I've raised our kids and all of that. 